China has grown to become an economic powerhouse over the past two decades, and not a single country in the world has experienced the same level of growth as China. But what if I told you that the entire growth of China was all a bubble? That's what the CEO of ARK Invest, Kathy Wood, thinks, and she likens the growth of China to Japan's 30-year economic disaster and the early 1990s. Just like Japan's GDP that was spearheaded by a real estate bubble, China is currently experiencing the largest housing bubble in history history. In this video, we will cover from top to bottom how the world is about to wake up to China's destined collapse. Over the past 20 years, China's economy has grown substantially, but a considerable portion of that has come from real estate. Property developers have borrowed money to expand their real estate portfolio to hundreds of cities. We're talking about modern glass and steel apartments, office buildings, and houses all across cities in China. Speculators began purchasing houses with the sole purpose of price appreciation. After all, from the perspective of Chinese citizens, housing prices have been increasing year after year for decades. This was in part from the rapid population growth that China experienced, but the speculation grew even further than that. Because housing prices just kept increasing year after year, the majority of Chinese citizens could no longer afford a standard house or apartment in cities like Beijing or Shanghai. The logical move would be to purchase a property within the vicinity of the cities, but far enough so that prices would be cheap. And that's exactly what many citizens did. People began flocking towards houses and apartments, not in Chinese cities, but rather 10 or 15 miles away. Because of the increasing demand for houses near cities, prices began to increase, leading citizens to expand even further away from the cities. Property developers believed that this expansion would continue, so they preemptively built houses further and further out. Nowadays, if you drive an hour or two outside of Beijing or Shanghai, you'll notice something very strange. There are plenty of modern buildings in great condition, but there's one issue. There's nobody there. Those cities are named ghost cities because the only reason they exist is that speculators think prices will increase. This is a testament to Chinese growing real estate bubble, a significant driver of the country's economy. Take a look at China's most renowned ghost town, Ordos. The city was expected to house 1 million people, but that number went down to 300,000 and finally to 100,000 in 2016. Only after moving top schools into the city was Ordos' new town able to fill its empty houses. These types of empty units are so widespread that the aggregate amount of space can literally house the entire country of Italy. After 20 years of appreciation, the Chinese real estate sector is now worth over $50 trillion. This is two times more than the U.S. and almost four times more than China's entire GDP. Loomis Sales, an investment management firm, estimated that 70% of China's entire wealth is in real estate. In China, it's not atypical to see citizens put aside money for decades just to purchase one property. Property prices near cities are so high relative to income that even after years of saving, citizens will have no choice but to rely on mortgages to afford shelter. This is exaggerated by the fact that increasing property prices make citizens feel the fear of missing out, ultimately forcing citizens to take out dangerous levels of loans. Four out of the top 10 of the most unaffordable cities to purchase housing in are all located in China. This type of appreciation is concerning and won't continue forever. We saw this before in America's 2008 recession, and we're seeing similar signs in China. China's real estate boom is already showing signs of a substantial slowdown. Because the Chinese housing market just keeps accelerating in prices, property developers have done everything to expand their real estate portfolios as fast as possible. Just like before any financial crisis, greed took the center stage and developers were soon stuck with too much debt to handle. One of these developers included the epitome of Chinese real estate development, Evergrande. Evergrande is one of the largest real estate developers in the world. And by using corporate bonds issued to international investors, Evergrande grew its real estate portfolio to over 565 million square meters of development land. This was only possible because Evergrande took out over $300 billion in debt. Such enormous access to the capital led Evergrande to thrive. In 2018, Evergrande became the most valuable real estate company in the entire world. However, this positive sentiment soon began to shift dramatically as investors realized that Evergrande was in major trouble. 
Credit agencies recently had to categorize Evergrande in default after the company failed to repay a $260 million interest payment. The credit outcry in response to this has been extreme as Evergrande's bond prices have fallen significantly over the past few months. International bondholders are now threatening to sue Evergrande in response to its debt crisis. Part of these struggles has to do with President Xi Jinping, who has been cracking down on the Chinese real estate sector. President Xi is attempting to reduce China's dependence on the property sector by reducing the amount of speculation in real estate. Xi's mantra is that homes are for the living, not for speculation. However, President Xi's actions are a threat to Chinese economic stability. Evergrande may be a large fish in the pond, but it's simply just one of many developers that are defaulting. Chinese real estate developers are currently dropping like flies. For example, Chinese developer Shimao recently defaulted on a $101 million interest payment. Another developer named Oceanwide Holdings defaulted on a $175 million loan. A recent exchange actually revealed that a total of 484 companies were overdue on at least three commercial payments in the fourth quarter of 2021. That is a staggering amount, and the disaster is just getting worse and worse as time goes on. It has become quite obvious that Chinese real estate may not be the best place to be in right now, and property developers know this too well. Contracted sales for the top 100 real estate development companies were down 35% in December of 2021. That marks the first year that development companies saw a decrease in sales in over 20 years, according to Kathy Wood. Even the Federal Reserve has taken note of China's housing bubble, as the Fed believes that China's real estate slowdown could ultimately hurt the U.S. economy. The Fed stated that stresses in China's real estate sector could strain the financial system, with possible spillovers to the United States. To back up this claim, the Fed cited China's government and local debt as a major concern. Many economists assume that China's fast-growing GDP is a sign of economic prosperity. However, a significant portion of that growth was fueled by a humongous debt bubble, not just in real estate, but in China's entire economy. Chinese household debt relative to both income and GDP has increased sizably over the past two decades. Household debt is growing disproportionately to GDP. It's true that China's GDP has been growing incredibly quickly, but what's growing even faster is China's debt balance. The debt crisis is becoming so severe that China's total debt as a percentage of GDP is almost in line with that of developed countries. Imagine an economic powerhouse like China having almost as much relative debt to GDP as developed countries. Such an overextension is bound to come with negative consequences. Kathy Wood likens the CCP's actions to try and take matters into their own hands as playing with fire. This is because their new policies could burn the whole property sector into ashes. Now that the developers are overextended, it's going to be difficult to bring them back to the ground floor. Kathy Wood believes China is in a very similar situation that Japan was in the early 80s before falling into a recession, a recession that they have never recovered from. Just like Japan in the 80s, Chinese real estate prices are elevated to new highs that are fueled by a growing debt crisis. The implications of China's impending crash are immensely deflationary. More specifically, China's struggling economy is going to crash commodities to unbelievable lows, and the upcoming crash could have powerful implications worldwide. The Chinese Communist Party has recognized that China's economy is weakening and has taken measures to stop a crash from happening. China's central bank recently announced that it will cut interest rates in order to boost the economy. This directly contradicts Federal Chair Jerome Powell, who wants to raise rates as soon as possible. China's property market is definitely in huge trouble that will likely continue to get worse as time goes on. S&P's rating agency expects a 10% decline in nationwide residential sales in 2022 due to credit tightening and restrictive policies. That decline is going to affect you in some shape or form no matter where you are watching this video from. See you in the next one, and thanks for watching!